and we are live ladies and gentlemen welcome back welcome back to part one of the logic of sports betting by ed miller and matthew david dow welcome back guys to the book club bros podcast book club baby How we you didn't doing? sound confident but you nailed it i did it you nailed it i though. sounded i sounded, i thought i sounded pretty good book on that. club bros maybe you did it intentionally but <laughs> welcome in guys if you are new here this is a book club full of bros and full of books but without uh we're filling them up up to four yeah i know book four. Yeah. five no five. i thought it was five this is five five One, two yeah. three four i five. can't even keep track of all these books i'm yeah. i'm pointing down at your stats well, that's yeah smart. that's good i don't know that's where you po- pointed over there though up to the last oh this one yeah oh, okay here there we go, go. But yeah, let's uh, let's dive right into it, guys. So, how'd you like the very first section? So I'll open it up since it is the book that I chose. So part of the reason that I chose it was I wanted to see not only how to because it's not only how to become a better, better, a better, better like if that. if you uh, if you want to do that, but also just like the nature of it, the business. How does it work? Because it's funneling so much money for all of these organizations. Like, what is the nature of it that's allowing this to go on? Like, it's it's now legal. It's always it's always been legal, for, but now it's, like, mostly legal, at, or it's legal in a lot of states. So, like, what is the premise and, like, what's some of the background? I know it started off with, like, more of some of the, um, more of some of the, like, number crunching. But I thought the intro, I actually, we, I think we all read that. But the first line was awesome. I think it said... If you can't spot the sucker in your first half hour at the table, you are the sucker. And that's kind of why I wanted to read this, just so I'm not, like, the person who just wants to talk about, like, betting, betting. Like, it's so mainstream now Mm -hmm. that, like, you can really, like, anyone can talk about betting. Because, I mean, if there's a bunch of bad bettors out there that these people are all making money off of, if you're betting, you just have money to lose. You're probably not winning that much. Yeah. Yeah, no, I actually really did like the introduction as well, just because it kind of gave you a comparison between, like, poker and, like, some of the other gambling that you can do and, like, what the pros, basically, of, like, why you can stick with, you know, sports betting. And it's actually, you know, there's not, like, if you know what you're doing, the there's not much to, like, luck. Rarely. Rarely is it luck. Yeah. But, yeah, um... I let me see when's my first highlight. I didn't have anything until page eighteen. So does anyone have anything before that? Don't. I uh actually off. highlighted something on nine just because it was like, I it's since it's the, our start for the book. It's kind of like the premise of it. It says like finally a caveat. This book is about the logic of sports betting. It's not a guide to becoming a professional sports better. And in particular, there is one key area of professional betting I don't cover: data analytics and modeling. It's possible to win a little. He talks about it a little bit more, but basically, I circled that and said that's why I chose this book. Is he's not going to go into the data analytics and the modeling and the how to like make a million dollars off betting if you bet smartly and the stuff like that. It's more about like how to bet, how to not be the sucker. Like right. at least be, you can learn a little bit and be smarter than ninety percent of people. But to get to ninety three, it takes a lot. Yeah, is what I'm, is how yeah, I yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, starting off, man, this book just kind of rocked you and straight like, to break even percentages. Holy moly! Yeah. Like, yeah. Um. Well, for before, I think that's where my highlights start. But did you guys have anything for sports betting as a multiplayer game or? anything about that no but i thought that was very interesting like that's a that's a great perspective to look at it um because you most of the time i don't know how, what apps you guys have used or like what you've seen but most of the time you're you're on there and you're you're placing your bets and it's like okay you would think it's it's me versus the game but in reality it's like you versus the books and like whoever is setting the numbers and doing all the research so it's so much more behind it than you just oh i'm gonna pick this person to do this tonight or i'm gonna pick this team to win like there's just so much more behind it it's such a great point too because it was actually something he said in the intro like whenever you're betting like i feel like the uh the typical way to look at it or how i used to look at it was like oh this is like a great value like this one's obvious like obviously you choose this one and then you read this and it says you're playing against a game against other people who are actively trying to beat you. They want you to choose that one because the, the thing because there's only two possible outcomes. That's what makes it. He talks about it more about it being a zero sum game when it's win everything or lose everything. Like you don't get to partially 
whatever you put in for your bet, like you either get that back and more or it's all gone. Yeah. So it's like a zero sum game. So like it's just someone's trying to take your money and you're trying you're trying to take money for just clicking a button and they're trying to just take your hard earned money. So it's yeah. like it's it's an interesting concept. Yeah. It's kind of why I re- wanted to read this. All right. Diving into the next section, break even percentages. Now, uh, all right. This threw me for a loop. I could not wrap my head around break-even percentages. So yeah. it explains in the first uh, or second paragraph, a break-even percentage, alternatively called implied odds, is the percentage of a time a bet must win for you to neither win nor lose money, making the bet over time. And um, it gave you an example. It says, if someone offers you a 5-to-1 odds that a six-sided die will land one, you have a 16.7% break-even percentage. And that also happens to be how often that the bet will win. And I read that over and over and over again, <laughs> and I could not get it in my head. Landon, did you do you understand break even percentages at all? I mean, it seems more. I, I I think you might be trying to overcomplicate it, but I feel like it's just. It's, I didn't know where he got that percentage at all. So mm-hmm. wait, wait, wait. The break even percentage. I understand yeah. where so, he was getting the odds. Yeah. So uh, do you know very much about sports betting and stuff like that? Because I don't necessarily either, but I figured a little you, bit. I, I mean, mean, so so just so just as far as like the numbers and stuff like that, I understand how you understand how he was getting the for- numbers for the formula. You just don't understand what it actually means. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Because so, otherwise, I was like, I mean, the the it's it's a confusing concept. Isn't except it? except that if it is law that's what's more important because i think he actually even goes on to say that where he's like uh you know even if uh even if uh you like if you're trying to do all this stuff uh, just calculate the break even percentage first and like if it's if it's something way off then right you, then it's then it's obviously going to be something that you may want to stay away of or something like that i mean it's a lot it's one of those things where it's we're not going to class Monday to Friday and learning about it anymore. So it's whenever you're trying to read and move on to the next page and stuff like that, it's hard to fully absorb. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, I mean, I understand how to calculate it and stuff like that, but I mean, it's, it seems like it just, the break even percentage just tells you what your lowest risk is because, because whenever you factor it, it's risk divided by risk plus win. So it's just, it has to do with whatever your whatever the best odd is. The problem with that is in betting, you can bet the best odd every time and it may not win. Yeah. So that's, so I think that's part of it. So I think it's, it's more so as like groundwork for betting, like the blueprint, but it's like the bet says this, but this person has a cold this week and this person just sprained their ankle. So I'm going to lean this way, even though like, I don't know, that's, that's kind of the way I view it, but I don't know whether they get called out in the comments or not. (laughs) But uh, all right, yeah. So that that threw me for the loop, and then um, I thought it was pretty interesting seeing how like the odds were listed, like American versus yeah for ev- everywhere else, where like the plus one hundred, minus one hundred. I didn't. I now I finally get that. Like I never really truly understood the. It's cool. I get it now too. I got the plus. I always understood the plus, but I never understood the minus. But well, that makes more sense now. I always understood both sides of the coin, but I like how he like literally equates it to like minus to like minus being the under or the uh the favorite and the yeah. positive being like just whenever you can actually see it and yeah. how like the money relates and then i thought it was actually kind of funny how of course like the united states is the only people that don't use a decimal system right yeah. like everyone else and uh, like, we go with a hundred yeah we go with a hundred they're like, like oh centimeters uh it's celsius yeah. like the united states is always just like different yeah like whenever it's like a hundred dollars i was like why why did he do that I thought that was weird. I had a highlight on 27. I don't know if anyone has something before that. Um, I just really uh, like highlighted on formulas, like yeah. stuff like that. I have a few things. Man. I was just, I, um, I was really just trying to get a grasp of it. Grasp as of yeah. Reading. Just so. like understanding that like, you got to convert everything to break yeah. percentages, then you can judge on which a fair price or not. Yeah. But apparently, if you learn that like quick and you're able to you know give rough estimates on your break even like that's one of the biggest keys yeah. to being able to find a good bet and i think that's what people that's what like people do because you have to if you're a good better you have to show like this is you have to this is what i am against the spread this yeah. is what i am against this and stuff like that because that's what i'm saying everyone's going to say they're a good better until like you have to show something right. and that's actually kind of right. what i highlighted on uh, page 27 so like midway through it it says but what this means is if you throw darts on 
starts at sports bets, it's not a great gambling game. You're going to lose a pretty healthy clip. The saving grace, and it is a big one, is that sports betting is a multiplayer game. And if you play much better than everyone else, including the sportsbook employees, it's possible to nullify the hold and get the edge on your side. And this is when he just finished talking about the hold. But I actually just highlighted because it was what we were reading before that in the context of like everyone's a betting expert is basically kind of like the way that I feel about anyone that talks about betting is just everyone's going to like who says like I suck at sports betting. Or like, I'm not good. I was like, this is a good bet. Even if you're a bad better, they're going to say, this is a great bet. If yeah. you're a bad better, it automatically makes it not a great bet coming from you. So it's like, that. that's one of the main main things that I was like trying to take away from this is it's not random. Like, you can't just look at it. I think he talks about it a little bit later, but like, you can't just, okay, the Chiefs play tonight. I'm going to pick this. The opening lines came out and like, da, da, da. Whenever, wherever it's at right before the game starts or a couple days before, is like after the st- like all the great values been taken right. and it flatlines. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool to see. But. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, to me, honestly, like reading up to like I think the first thirty pages or whatever, grind <laughs> was a grind. It made me even more intimidated to be like, all right, this you is not know. the this is not the world for me. Like, there's no way I'm gonna be ever making money. Because that just, like, overwhelmed me. Dude, I get that's, that. that's so true. Like, that's yeah. how I feel about, like, uh, like investing and in, not necessarily just investing, but when it comes to, like, trading stocks and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, I would have to know someone because there's too much going on or real estate. Like, I have to know someone because there's too much. And I know that you can get your real estate, you know, license online. Yeah. So, I know that you can do it. It's just too much for me to want to go and do. So, like, yeah, it's, yeah. So it's definitely, it's, yeah. I, I could definitely see that though. Yeah, and then and then it was just like getting even more complicated. If you when you were talking about parlays. Oh, I, so you don't get parlays? I love parlays. Yeah, parlays I, are I great. Get, I get parlays, but yeah. it's not um, as bad. I don't yeah. think it's it wasn't as like daunting as like the other stuff. I really and, think it's just the numbers thing. And yeah. honestly, dude, I'm not gonna lie. You almost need a few people to have like watched explain it a little yeah. bit because I watched the whole like this uh, podcast that I watched it did a gambling show every Sunday for NFL season and they just like bet on seven games yeah. talk about the plus minus and it gave me a rough idea I told you guys off uh, off the pod but I was like I still like at the end of that I still didn't really know what plus and minus meant yeah like I like I knew that one of them was a favorite but if you said plus 300 today the underdog or the favorite I'm like oh, I don't know I'll, I'll just pick one yeah like it's but now I now I feel like I'm starting to get it with parlays the way that they des- described this I was like yeah. I'm glad I know what this is. Cause this is a little, a little bit confusing to try and read. It's yeah. easier to explain yeah. and understand than it is to try and like read. It's like, I don't know what they're trying to necessarily say here, but I know what they're, but I know what they mean. Yeah. Ba- based off of what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, kn- I know what parlays mean like in general, like how it's just like, if this happens, that happens. And mm-hmm. then it's a chain. Yeah. And then, but it was just like the seeing the odds. Like, I mean, I don't know if you'll, if you guys will see it, but like that chart mm-hmm. of like everything, the number of legs for a parlay to happen was crazy. Yeah. I was like, I was like, wow, the break even. Dude, but that everyone stuff. knows parlays because like they the the oh, one yeah. the one dollar I hype. got I picked all fifteen right. games today for the NFL and I got and yeah. it's like the last $1, two games it's like one dollar pays out like two hundred thousand could win a million. It's just like crazy yeah. stuff, dude. Yeah. It's but, a crazy uh, world for gambling out there, for sure. But I mean, I right. guess I mean, I mean, if you know the odds and stuff like that, and you actually truly know, and you ran your numbers, it's just, it's worth it. Yeah. But um. I th- oh, honestly, I hi- highlighted something on thirty eight about parlays, and I thought I said, uh, over the course of the eight bets, you haven't just you haven't bet just eighty dollars. You've actually bet two hundred twenty nine, and that two twenty nine total bet, you lose ten, which is about a four point four percent hold. I thought that kind of crystallized it a little bit. But he said, parlays don't hold more; they make you they make you bet more money yeah. so like parlays are i thought it was cool to see a compound like if you bet 10 and then it showed you all the different ways your money works like if you lose win win it doesn't matter yeah, you yeah. Lost. if you lose win yeah. win if you lose lose win doesn't matter because you lost if you win lose win you just bet the 10 if you win win lose you bet whatever the 10 is that compounded and then you still lost it and i thought that was just kind of cool to see like what the money was doing on the background of the parlay yeah yeah it's Super interesting stuff. Uh, moving on to the section of market making, this was pretty interesting. I like this, this is yeah. where like it like I was like, 
He literally starts it off to, uh, yeah. you know, okay, we're done for now with the nuts and bolts with the mass stuff. Dude, that was a breath of fresh air. <laughs> and I, yeah, I was, I was so happy about that. Um, but yeah, what do you guys? Coming thought? from the math guy too, what in the world? <laughs> it's a good thing I, I mean, picked this pick. Yeah, I'd this was. If you did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, starting. It's in, also early on in the book. Where yeah. Just dealing with all the numbers. Yeah, they just flooded us it, with it. It's a. I don't know. Would you rather it be reversed, though? You want those numbers at the end? You need the numbers to know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. I book. think it was, like, an in, in ease. Like, I don't think it was really, like, eased in. Like, what, to me, I feel like he could have warmed us up with maybe the market making or something. <laughs> and then he's like, all right. So this you is could, like it could actually... have been, like, at the back half of our first section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it was just, like, off the rip. It was. It was. The introduction was pretty solid, though, so you got to yeah. give him credit for Exactly. That. I at guess maybe did. that was the, the warm-up, but... Uh, all right, so for the market making section, um, what do you guys think about that? Like, kind of learning more about the sports books and like who picks the lines and stuff. Like, why, why it was you know Xavier should be you know negative uh, two point five against Creighton yeah, and stuff. Dude, this is why I chose the book. Yeah, it's like basically for this section, just because I was curious. Like, like what are these numbers? Like, I feel like it's one of those things that just annoys me. Like, I've never asked anyone, but it's like, what are these numbers? How are they, like, who gets to pick this? Like, I understand that, like, whenever the Warriors are favored against the, the like, you know, Detroit Pistons, I get, Ooh. like, yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. Why are they favored by two and a half points? Yeah, right. Like, so, I, I mean, I, that's what was super curious to me. I thought it was hilarious. I highlighted it on page 42 where he was just going super nerd, super nerd, super nerd, yeah. just everywhere for the, uh, for the formula, but I thought it was cool. He said there's three ways that the lines get made. He gave you the process of like small army of super nerds that do like the digging and the stuff like that. And then they copy from other sports book books and then the price discovery. So like, it's like slowly they take the lid off. Like it's like very, very close. Then the copying. And then once it's price discovery, everyone's got access to it. But I thought it was a really, really solid chapter. Yeah. No, I, I actually like this one a little bit more because it wasn't the it was super math calculation on like which one to pick, but yeah, the like kind of business side of it. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I didn't have anything about it in regards to highlights though. Um, I did think it was pretty interesting that like basically there's probably like the big sports books like Caesar's Palace, you know, FanDuel, like those guys probably have the super nerds, and then it's just like all those other sub markets just copy them. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting to see because uh, uh, something else I thought was crazy on page 44, like the uh, example that they use about the gold. Dude, that's yeah. such a dude. That's such an interesting uh, thing to think about. What did you relate to? Well, I mean, because what's what side do you more go with? So the story, the story lays out. We'll just go quick with it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to sell you. We'll even make it about a book. I'm trying to sell you this book for 10 bucks because yeah. it retails for 10 bucks. and You forget your wallet. So you're like, I'll pay you tomorrow. I come back, the book's on sale now for seven fifty. You're like, I want to get it for seven fifty. I'm like, you would have paid me ten yesterday. Yeah. What do you say? Are you just do you just do you have to default to market value or do you have any type of does it depend on your relationship with the person, on if you really committed to paying the ten? If um, you never technically said it, I was I just told you I was gonna buy the book and never said I was gonna buy it for ten. That's just what it was yesterday. Like gray area. Depends on I think it depends on the price it changed. That's you know yeah what was it, it? I think it was like three hundred bucks right it was five hundred yeah. bucks about I think yeah and this five hundred bucks is you know that's quite the steep discount yeah, yeah. so I think you so have that's to honor how you'd that. measure it then yeah it basically like would 10, be the discount. ten to seven it's like all right three bucks like I'll honor the ten even though it's on sale for seven but if it was like a hundred what about like a like a thousand to nine hundred like it's on a hundred dollars off like where's the yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what is it? Ten bucks? Is it fifty? Probably anything under a hundred. Anything under hundred? Yeah, I'd say even yeah, fifty. Di- di- uh, it's great. I just yeah. thought it was inter- uh, an interesting like example of how the market works. Yeah, and it says who's right, who's fair. Like, uh, it basically is like there's no like in the game of life, you're just all playing. Yeah, like, it's all a game. I think it's so interesting too on like. I don't know if it mentioned in this section, but like how the just the lines move mm-hmm. like so quickly and oh so rapidly, gosh. and how they can take bets in, but but choose to keep it or, or choose to accept it or not. Right, yeah, right. To, and then choose, and then if you don't move the line enough, then it can somehow jam up the book because they they fielded all these bets that they thought were going to be good. That like, that's what made it like wow. Yeah, that's what made it like very intriguing to me. 
about like how because it, it's so high risk. That's why the word risk is everywhere. Yeah. In this book, like it's so high risk. So it's that's why it's like I feel like betting for me when I get to that point would be for pure fun, like with money that I can allocate to it. And if I run out, I'll reset my funds next month, like whatever I can afford. Because if you don't like, it's so it's so risky. We we've talked about it at the gas station. Like you play lotto scratch, you feel like you oh, I gotta go. I, that next one's gotta hit. Yeah. I got to get one more. Even if it's just to get 10 bucks back, I got to get one more card. Yeah. And then it only gets you five. And then you're like, oh my, well, the next one's got to be 10. Then there's not two $5 winners in a row. Right. And then you're just like. Then you're down, down bad. Dude, you're down so bad. But, um, Man. yeah, no, I thought that was really in- interesting. And then like, yeah. And then there was a whole, like the information game on it. Just like mm-hmm. moving through, like oh, they actually, figuring out the what? actual customer who's bidding and like determining the lines off of that. Like, all right, we have a lot of Alabama fans. So we're going to, we're going to take We're going to adjust that line because they're going to be betting heavy in Alabama. Right. That's how they know. That's what's so cool that. And I think that's what allows for, for there to be so many, cause there's like so many ways you can gamble, like so many different people that have their sites and stuff like that, because uh, it talks about, you know, this sports book might be an NFL gambling book or whatever, or like prize picks is very into NBA and stuff like that. So they're not going to get like the best numbers for football. So if they have a football thing, they'll just take it from NFL gambling.com yeah. or like whatever it is and just be able to like bounce it off of each other in those ways. Yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. But you were uh, just, just to kind of go back on it real quick. You were talking about how the money moved and on page 48, since we're almost done with our section, it says uh, the game opened up minus six, but now it's all the way down to minus three and a half as sharp money is absolutely p- pounding the game. Well, not necessarily. The opener may have been minus six because that's whoever did 30 seconds of math and opened the market and threw it up. It may have moved because a handful of guys with spreadsheets mashing the refresh button bet $100 to $300 at the time to move it there. That sharp money pounding the game could be less than a few thousand dollars in total volume. And I just highlighted that and I just put down smoke and mirrors like the whole thing is like you're never gonna if you want to know you have to be on the inside otherwise you have to do some type of research and just bet that's why it's a bet like i just i bet that this is gonna happen just because i think that that's not gonna happen i do and think that's it's a it little unfair though like i don't well i, I don't know if it's said in here but like go ahead. um when the certain odds are placed when you bet something, do those odds get locked in for you? Yes, 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 yes. So that's that's so so that's what's so cool about gambling is like uh, the guy that I that kind of introduced me to it. He's like, I got this at this number. That's great value. If you don't hurry up tomorrow, it's going to drop down more, 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 more. So like, if I'm getting gotcha. the yeah, so like whenever a line that's so that that so and that's going to help you understand it a little more. So like when the line opens, it's basically the way they said it is this zero it's like they'll open a line he said it early on for alabama he would put him at like at a pick em. yeah and you, obviously we know that now so like the more you the more you if you give people a pick em, it's like i'll put one million dollars on alabama versus two lane yeah and it, because it's because it's the, like the i'll odd, pick em. right if it's like 10 to 1 50 to 1 or something like that you're like okay well now i gotta bet i thought that was a cool part too how what that means is if it's minus 100, you have to bet 100 to, to win, win 100. two. Yeah. But if it's plus 100, you have to bet 100 to win 100. Yeah. So plus you just get the money, minus you get your money back that you bet, plus whatever the minus is. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like how, like those numbers aren't, for us, that's like actual values. So if it's plus 100 and you bet 1,000, then you just get 1,000 back. Or you get, like you just add the zero to it. Well, because it, because it, because it's, right. yeah, because, it, oh, sorry, 1100. So I was say yeah. thousand to win a thousand. I was like, wow. but, uh, <laughs> but like that, I thought that was cool. How, like the values kind of work that way for, uh, the odds, but no, there's a lot of stuff that yeah. I, it just kind of breaks down that just clears up so much. Yeah. It was definitely like very informational. Like this first portion, I honestly didn't have too many highlights. So, um, and then it goes into the sports book business models on 52, but was there anything that you guys want to mention before we kind of move on to that section? Um, actually, just last thing. I highlighted this because I thought it was funny. Or actually, it was 
more i put like this is funny slash kind of creepy how they do like their player profiling yeah and they were like it's the first way that market makers leverage information they go through all the customers uh betting history literally every customer and try to draw conclusions about the player the nature of the conditions can vary obviously but for the most part it boils down to how sharp is this person and it just made me think man how embarrassing like, would it be if you, like, don't know? You don't know because it's their rank that they have for you. Oh, yeah. And, like, you're just, like, talking all this game and you're a one. Yeah. You're a one star. And they got five stars. And it's just, I just thought that's so interesting how they can, like, trace all of that stuff. Yeah. Like, whenever you're hitting accept or agree or whatever. Yeah. I think it's interesting that they, they can quantify, like, your habits yeah. down to a, you know, actual numerical value and be like, oh, yeah, he, yeah. Every time he sees an Alabama pick, that's on you know that's negative one ten, you know that's an instant buy. He'll throw a hundred on it. All it's day. a it's a it's a weird thing that we can track now. Yeah, like we can track like sleep human patterns. Behavior. We can track yeah. like yeah. everything now. So it's like, yeah, no, they're starting to they're starting to figure us out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the other section, kind of like the end of our section of for the reading yep. was the sports book business models portion um you guys have anything about that i actually did think it was pretty interesting about the fee about how like that like because these uh sports books are betting on the sports that the actual sports commission the nfl and mlb oh and my, stuff so get, many get so a percentage, many percentage of the revenue yeah. and i was like what and like how there was that overrule for, from i think was it the supreme court that overruled it yeah, that the uh, came down in 2018 that they removed restrictions on the U.S. sports betting. Yeah, because it was a federal thing where like the sports books had to pay like a tax of yeah one percent integrity fee. Integrity yeah. fee. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's that's what the leagues are asking for. I think it was only point two five. All for the, the federal. Leagues, yeah. All the leagues were asking the, for a one percent oh, yeah, integrity yeah. fee. Yeah. yeah. Point two five. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Point. It was. Yeah. So it went from Bro, 0.25 that, like, to one percent. Yeah. It makes me wonder, like, why I didn't just ask for more sometimes in life. <laughs> like, can I get 1%? In t- it's where he was just like, can I get 1% of, you know, enter Miami? Or maybe I can get a percentage of, like, a sports club whenever you come over. And if it's going to make messy millions. It's going to make it's all it takes. Jordan, it's Michael Jordan's made him millions to billions. Like, just a yeah. couple percent. That's all you need. <laughs> yep, you apparently. Thought. But, yeah, no, I thought it was. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, buddy. But, um. Yeah, I thought that part was really interesting, just, like, hearing the, um, that type of, like, what it was going through and, like, how huge it was for the sports books to get that point two five lifted off. And then, because it makes sense, because if the, the hold is basically, the per, like, the percentage that the sports books are making, right? That's, That's what, what it was kind of determined. Like. And that was, like, you know, all of them were less than, like, usually five, less than 5%. So if 1% of that, 20% of your entire business revenue – is going to like it's just cut just like that just yeah. for the leagues like, yeah what yeah it's crazy i know it's i mean that's so much yeah it is it's it's, it's so much you're only making five percent and one percent of that already goes i know because yeah. they were like you know you Holy gotta you gotta moly. pay a fee for the people who are doing the data collecting and you got to be able to pay oh, yeah. the, like they gave you the list of a fee of uh like it's not it's not like a super long list but whatever you're paying for, I feel like it's expensive. Oh, the like advertising, every, the promotions. Yeah. Yeah, they have with all the, you know, fan do all the time. You know, bet five, win, or right, what, right. free 250 on yeah. us or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah, that's just crazy. I'm like, so much man, money in it. So much money, but like, it's so little pr- profit margins. Like, yeah. it's just rapid fire. That's what I thought. Dude. Volume. Like the, pro- the profit margin is crazy. But that's all. I think that was it. Yeah, right. So here, let me uh, shop at the retail spot. Yeah, that was basically the end of the reading section. So I had one more highlight since we're basically wrapping it up here. So uh, I highlighted the house always wins just isn't true in sports betting. As it, sorry, this is on page fifty four. As I described in the market making chapter, writing a certain number of bad, of uh, bad for the sports book bets is just part of the market making process. Those bets cost the book money, and if the book doesn't make those make the markets intelligent enough i.e. profile customers poorly, moves too much on action, moves too little on action, moves too much on the wrong action, stuff like that. The market, the market, uh, what did I just lost? The market making book will offer too many soft bets to their customers at limits that are too high and they will get beat. So I just thought that like this, for me, I highlight on the side, 
it's not a fair game, but there is you're not set up to fail everywhere. Like he'll highlight like look the best you know the market making where the market makers and then the uh whatever the section was is just beneath that they're going to be more intelligent books because they're getting the lines directly they have more of a feel on the games but there are sports books out there that just have bad lines yeah like if you can look at what you get one number here and one number there like bet the better right like so, like in. someone's like so they're not monitoring everything basically sports books makes mistakes as well yeah like they don't always have the best pulse on other stuff and they'll give you bad sports bets and stuff or like things that, that can get beat so i thought that was like a decent point yeah and i think that's where it kind of like overall that i think that's the main message that they kind of wanted to get in this first section was just like like it's not it's not an actual gamble it's like everyone is betting on this like are they're taking numbers on this certain outcome and even the people that are hosting and like collecting all the numbers and stuff like that like they don't even truly know what's going to happen. Yeah. I think that yeah, I think that's that's definitely true. What happened, I think the first section of this book for me, what it really brought to like my attention was in the beginning, like whenever you're betting on sports, the the numbers and like everything that you're seeing is like the toughest possible one. So if you want to get better, you just have to look a little bit sooner. Yeah. Like but I to me it's almost like it's almost not scary but like crazy to think they're putting the worst possible numbers on blast to get the most amount of people to see them and bet on those numbers. So you just get sucker bets coming in like crazy, making so much money. Like all these people that can afford to bet that and think it's a good idea. No one's telling you to bet it. If you can bet it, you can bet it. <laughs> so, yeah. But like whenever they're presenting it, like, you know, the Chiefs are minus da da da. The best possible time to bet the Chiefs versus whatever would be in that opening, opening right. time. As and the smart sports bettors know that. Like I feel like you don't have to be that smart. You just have to be on time to a certain degree. You have to also have a feel for it, but you have to – it's almost like you can't show up for a sneakers drop at – at 10 30 and think the jordan ones are still going to be there yeah. you got to be waiting in line at 10 o'clock 10 and once you hit you hit add to cart check out yeah waiting apple waiting pay. it'll Boom. pick your thing apple yeah. pay have it all prepped. so that's how i look at it like sports betting the sooner you get in the better you're every we're all betting but you can it's the most risk and the sooner you get in you can eliminate some of the risk yeah no i agree i think that it, the variance I, for sure I, I i would agree it's like early the better if you can detect those like those flaws and whatever lines that they played mm -hmm. then yeah you'll be successful but i would almost argue that uh it's almost broadcast to wait as long as possible because what about injuries what about this and that whenever right. like the real value like injuries are going to happen it might happen in the game yeah. so it's like the real values when it opens but if everyone's saying oh i don't know i mean we're, we're, i don't know I'm, i need yeah, to feel this one like, out I, I don't know how i feel i'm going to stuff this one in the corner and i'll pick that game sunday morning especially and it's like well, oh, right oh, or oh, like if someone's on ir and they're like oh we don't know it's going to be day to day for them that like, part, you know, kd's like you know he, he tweaked his knee on practice two days ago and you're like but you know is he if he comes in right but the, you don't know the caveat to that if you're a smart better don't you just avoid that bet not bet that day on him bet on someone else very true why I, bet I on kd so. if it's if if it's the one thing you're betting on if he's the determining factor and I he's agree. the question mark right so that's how but if you're not a smart better you're just like oh i woke up planning to bet on kevin durant right that's what people are gonna do yeah. Yeah. i i because i feel like that's what i would have done I woke up betting to, to be bet like, on ah, Katie will be good. Oh, Katie's oh, injured. Oh, okay. What? Now I'm going to bet yeah. against him. And then he goes off. And now I'm pissed because I wanted him to go off anyways. And yeah. it's like, that's when, that's why I have to bet for fun because I love sports so much. It will affect me mentally. Yeah. If I have like a, Steph, you had to make that shot. Yeah. Like I wanted him to make it anyways. So if uh, I, I, like, I almost may choose to bet on exclusively not my teams I like. What, um, Obviously, would you bet on basketball or would oh, you yeah. stay away from it just because of your relationship with it? If I was betting, I'd probably like just try to be a smart better. Like I'd bet the Bucks to just to, to just go to town on. Would you do only team wins, like stuff like that? Or would you go like, oh, Steph, ha you know, goes over dude, 30? Or would you go over under and stuff like that? Bro. Dude, I so I I don't know that I, I ever. I, couldn't, I don't think I, I don't could know, ever do that. I don't know about those. Those ones I would do, like the player props. I think it'd be a fun thing. The one thing that I see uh, that Nick Wright does that I, I haven't really, I can't see myself really loving it is the futures bets. 
because like you gotta wait so long. He says it's cool because like you you set the bed, it's a season long bed and whatever. But it's like so the Cardinals were really good last year. St. Louis Cardinals went oh, to the yeah. playoffs, had Pujols, all this stuff. Thought we we're gonna be signed Wilson Contreras. We are like thirty games under five hundred right now and not gonna make the playoffs at all. I would have at least taken my money on a futures bet. Cardinals win the division. Our division's bad. Yeah. We're just terrible. So I'm like, Cardinals win the division. Dude, that thing is over in August. The They can't win the division. They're out. They're disqualified. That would kill me. Yeah. That, that would just be frustrating, yeah. you know? Like, like that bet's yeah. already dead. If it's yeah. alive, that'd be fun. Yeah. But I don't know if I, like, I don't know if, I don't know if I would want to add that type of negativity. Like, it's just weird. To, I don't know. It's just, it's just a way to think about it's it. such a long but play. It's a long play. It's a long, yeah. long play. Yeah. Such a long play. I'm not, oh, yeah. So I'm not huge know. on futures, about, but like over unders and stuff like that. Did you do it? I uh, could never. I could never. If like stuff's like, like plus plus minus thirty. I run the. I I usually run the parlays with those. So like mm-hmm. I'll pick like I don't know. My favorite you is like look the, at matchups. You can yeah. be smart. Like yeah. If, yeah. Or like the fantasy points. Like I'll do fantasy points, which um, is it. Like say, um. LeBron will have forty plus fantasy points tonight. Are you picking that over or under? Depending on who they're no playing. No way. You can bet on the odds of the fantasy. Yeah, bro. Yeah, because fantasy it's like points, points rebounds, yep. assists, and what? stuff like that. All factors for that it. May, I, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that but it's sense. a weird. It's a. It's a. It's not like weird, but it's a different. It's a different way to super be able to weird. Play. It's yeah. super weird to like. Uh, I guess like put it quantitatively like yeah right 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 it's almost like a parlay on itself yeah because you're adding up these total points to a fantasy point bro yeah i this is one right now it's huge it's called prize picks and it's like you just so like, nba huh it's it it's I think it's mostly for nba but now they're trying to branch it out because it was uh it's like sponsored by paul george's podcast and it's called Price Picks, and it's like li- literally this is the way they break it down. It's not you're not playing against anyone. It's just you versus the projections available. And all you do is you click on. Do you think he's gonna have seven rebounds, more than seven rebounds? Click on it. Is Chris Paul gonna have more than five assists? Click on it. And it's basically you can win uh, up to up to twenty five times your money. I think it is. Oh, uh, okay. So it's like a kind of like, like a glorified uh, yeah, yeah. parlay. Yes, yeah, it's, it's essentially what it is. Like, so they give you like a, seven options. It's prize picks. It's individual people. You can't even do like uh, like the Bulls are going to win tonight. Right. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's not. You can't yeah. even do it. It's all yeah. individual players. Who do you think is going to do what? It's the same with yeah. the one I use. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's the same thing. Like they'll they don't. It's like okay, he'll hit three threes today over under. He'll hit. He'll have fifteen rebounds today over under my favorite person to bet on last season was Jokic though oh so you actually bet yeah last year i was yeah Jokic. Money? i mean Chico. bro i made i don't it wasn't it wasn't that great it was not that great I, I i probably spent for the whole season i probably spent like three three hundred dollars and then my return was like probably like 215 Oh, okay. Yeah. So not too bad. I, I mean, yeah, it wasn't terrible, but it's like Well when you're betting on a good bet, you're not you can't make that much. Yeah, yeah. It's like you can't yeah. make that much money betting on the Yankees to win the World Series every year, even though they haven't. Right. It's because they got the most stacked team right. every year. I don't know. I'd still take those odds it's all interesting. day. You know, I'd I'd rather just see the wins come in. That's where that's where it is. But like there's better that's what there's yeah. there's that, literally no type. two betters are the same. Never. Like everyone has a you're gonna there are people that will say i will literally get in a wreck before i will do a parlay mm-hmm. and it's like what mm-hmm. he, he see he talks about yeah. it. like they're not bad bets they're you gotta do it but there's i won't even do them i will never make a futures bet i will never do a a prop i will like yeah it's all a, it comes down to preference like it really comes down to what works for you does your pre-game ritual make you throw 98 and throw strikes or are you a good player yeah it's okay and they I mean, even I don't knock anyone's stuff now. It's just like we're all we're all like very uniquely different, when yeah. it, even when it comes to betting. It also just depends too, like the on certain apps. Like I know, like where like sports betting is like official, like it's like Jersey, Vegas, and all that. Right. Like you could use FanDuel, and FanDuel they have money lines. They like do. They, I know. They do that, but like the other stuff that you can just like use and bet on, most of them will be the same. It's just like you pick over unders for certain people like what is this player going to do tonight but i think this is going to be good like once sports betting gets like fully like okay it's legal completely 
we can get on FanDuel, you can look at money lines, you can look at over unders, all that stuff, then it'll be very helpful. How yeah. how close do you think to where one hundred percent legal mm, in all fifty man. states? I don't know. I think or if, uh, yeah. How about just in Florida? I mean, DeSantis is pushing. It's gotta on be. That. It's weird. It's like, gotta be cool. We like, should. I mean, people in Florida have been really wanting to get. It, yeah, to yeah. Get it for the longest. So like, and, and it's like getting some crazy heavy pushback. I think for a certain reason too. Like, I can't. Um, know. I, know I can't remember. I think it has something to do with maybe our demographic and everything. Like just the melting pot of Florida, just like having a lot of. Uh, I think. I think it's like. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's tough to get everyone on board. Yeah, there's like if no one else is on board. Addicted. Like, I thought, I would hope that Florida was going to be one of the first ones, but I could also see us being one of the last ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. Depends. It, yeah, it definitely, it yeah. just depends. But the market for it, that's why I wanted to read this, because, like, I don't, I didn't know much. I know, I felt like I was way too interest, interested to not know, like, really anything about it. Mm-hmm. And it's doing so much, not forget sports, for just literally everything. Hamster racing. <laughs> the, uh, look, there's stuff like it just betting on stuff is just it's it's pumping so much money into the honestly it feels like people that have way too much money what just came out uh you probably saw it like phil mickelson's gambled like a billion oh, dollars yeah, yeah. in his life yeah. really yes gambled he's, he's won a lot he's lost like what do they say he's lost like 250 million wow. or something like that but that's he's like crazy. one of yeah so like 250 million i mean do you know the money that's moving around out there that's why i don't like yeah. i never i was so i had never like really taken time to think about some of that yeah, yeah man. like no, it's dude, just that's, crazy that's some wild stuff though. and it's changing it's allowing all these tv deals it's allowing Jalen brown to get 300 million it's allowing luca to get 400 million in a couple of years when they sign a new td tv deal and they have like I mean, dude, it's and it's real. I, I know there's other stuff going on, but I almost would say like it's fifty percent legalizing sports betting and just letting this money just pump through. Yeah, and they found a way to like centralize it and probably doing some legal stuff. Maybe not. I don't know. But either way, like the sports betting has to account for like a lot of money that's coming through. Do you think for sure? Inclusion, like as sports getting gets more and more beneficial, do you think it's gonna be better or worse for the game? I think I don't know. It's it's gonna be that tough, is, bro. That's a great question. Yeah, like the psychology behind it is like, okay, once people like start to see everywhere, like, okay, people are betting on me to score thirty tonight. Like, there's a lot of people betting on me to right. score he, thirty. Like so the, the players can see their own lines. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. So they're they might they honestly might be like, okay, look, I'm I'm gonna go for thirty, and I'm gonna do it by any means possible. Cause, bro, oh, there's you just think it's so gonna much. affect it, like ball hog, let, like, bro. Yeah, hey, I, I need this man. Yeah, like, the, I got a yeah. parlay Dude, on me. That's crazy. The one thing, the yeah. one thing though, is like, you'll never be allowed to like bet on yourself. Right. Exactly. Like, or within your own league. That's the one thing that I think it has. If that ever changes, there's no way because then, then yeah, it's yeah, just like throwing games. Yeah, stuff, because yeah. they're always tra- like people are still getting uh, suspended and stuff like that in the NFL for. That's what I'm saying. Like that's why sports betting is not as new as it feels no. because how are people still getting in trouble and how i mean it's not like i, I want to sit here and judge but i'm off that now and i'm sitting here like i don't know anything about this stuff either but it's been out there and we're all talking about it and we're all t- but like you can't bet from this location and it's not even legal in this stead, not, state and i didn't even know i couldn't bet in general i thought i could just couldn't bet on the nfl i can't do college or i can't bet in this parking lot or mm-hmm. And it's like obviously we're at the, I think what are we like maybe two steps past the NIL stage, like we're not in the very beginning of it. We're like college is up in at smoke right now over this NIL thing. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like that was maybe sports betting a little while ago. We're a little bit out of it, but we don't have like a blueprint for like what it should look like yet. Yeah, yeah. I was just but, curious. I was just curious to see like how that would work. I mean, like as things get more, I feel like people are gonna just see like players even more and more like a product or something like that like i don't know how much well, the it's thing is though but the thing it. is and that's what's crazy and he can actually miguel can attest to this too uh go watch the uh tony the tony donny 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 the tony donny yeah. donaghy or whatever uh documentary on netflix where they yeah. talk about like the fact and oh my gosh i was actually watching a youtube video about like michael jordan's era and stuff era and stuff like that 
and it's just like the NBA. It used to like way back in the beginning stages. It was like just kind of like a like a clown show. Like it was just a bunch of oh, fights, yeah. and like it just yeah, wasn't yeah. as organized. Yeah. There wasn't they didn't have all the nice money in the facilities and stuff like that. So it kind of had to be. But like once it got bigger, they turned it into more of like an entertainment business. And I was watching this breakdown where like you know eventually the NBA started getting onto us and said we can't foul Michael Jordan. Like we can't do we can't hurt him because he's like the best player and he's putting on for the sport and the stuff like that. And the, it made these other players feel a certain type of way. And then you find out that like, you know, during that period of time in like the 2000s and the late 19, 1990s, like Tim Donaghy is like thro- fixing some of these games in, uh, in collusion with the mafia. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the integrity? Like it was a whole big spiel. The refs are supposed to uphold and like call fair fouls and they're the ones that are poisoning the game and throwing the... So it led to that whole thing. So does more money affect the the like integrity the of the game? Yeah, or it could because but, I mean, dude. What? Don't wait now. If you threaten someone on their life, what are they gonna do? Yeah. I mean, when you're talking about yeah. when you're talking about I'm a five hundred thousand dollars in sports gambling debt, and I have to throw this game in order to clear it. Or I'm. You're dead. not gonna do that. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm telling you. However, you got there, it's tough. It's very tough. It's a lot of bad decisions in a row. Yeah. But like, you're not gonna do it. Yeah. You're not gonna throw the World Series to stay alive. I'm telling you right now. Please don't let me get to that situation. I'm throwing that game. Oh yeah. I'm throwing 100%, that game, bro. bro. To stay alive. My family. That's what this stuff is. That's where I like can really relate it. I'm not someone who's gonna be like, oh, the dude's so soft. With no. I'm not, no, bro. It's his life, and he's got kids and stuff. Like, like but legitimately, it will never come out, huh? It will never come out, though. It, it all thing. depends. Obviously, if everyone knew that his situation, yeah, for sure. But no one will know that. Yeah, That's for what? Think. Like, like you were giving, you were giving him empathy. Like, obviously, man, the guy's got a family and stuff. But like, you won't know. You will never know why he threw. Yeah. Very, very true. Until, until that's he true. just and comes out. That's true, and that's why these documentaries are amazing. Yeah. Are absolutely amazing. You could not even have any idea. Man, the media is so good. Yeah, They're man. so good at covering stuff up. Gosh dang it. Gosh <laughs> but, dang it. You have no, no idea what's going on. Yeah. But, I mean, I think also, just quick point, if if it does come to that and players are getting to see, like, what their numbers are and, like, what people are betting, I think uh, on, a, on another note would be, they would just have to crack down a lot more. That's what they're doing in the NIL, right? That's yeah, what it like, is. like if it's so many investigations, like just undercover, just tapping in to see like what they're talking about, what's going on. Um, but that that might also mess up the game too. Who knows? Yeah, it's it sounds like basically the whole like, all right, I'm gonna give this to you, and if you can't handle it, then I'm taking it back. Yeah, exactly. So it's like here's NIL, and you couldn't handle it, so we got to take it back a, think, a little bit. Th- a I was little gonna bit. say, I was no, like, you it's can't take like it all the way back. Bot, no, that you know? would be insane. Yeah, that, I feel great. like if they did that, everyone would just simultaneously quit college football. Yeah, and it'd just be weird. So like, I don't think they're ne- or college like sports. I don't think because there's other avenues now. Yeah. So like, it, it'd be a weird like just no dart to it. I mean, that's true, but they got USFL, they, dude. They got so many football yeah. leagues now, though. But it would suck for those guys because then they're know. taking all their jobs. Partially, yes and no. That's a whole different story because then you got depends, underage though. people. You got seventeen-year-old guys playing against you know twenty-eight-year-olds. Yeah, and they're football all players got to go before though. They're talking like twenty twenty-one by the time they come out. Yeah, but they have no NIL because a lot, a lot of them go. Well, not a lot of them, but now probably a lot of them do oh, they go, go straight there. Yeah, they, yeah. they go. They go straight to. USFL, try to get drafted, don't get drafted, go to USFL. So they were going to do it anyways. Right. Just may speed along. Yeah, I was thinking like, too. you know, you're going out of high school and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that. Right. I was talking, I was thinking more rocked. for the current, I was thinking yeah. more for the current college athletes. But, all yeah, right. Basketball. Some pretty good, pretty good discussion here. But let's, uh, let's wrap this up before we end the podcast. Where are we reading to next? Oh, okay. yeah. What do we, what do we <clears> <throat> Is it, uh, we ended on 57, I think the next one. So what was that? That was like, I think it was like 50 pages. 57 pages? Holy no, it was, we started on eight. No, it oh, okay. yeah, it started, yeah. Still though, man. Like 40. 40. Yeah, I it's guess, a, no, that's about right. That's about good, right. Yeah, that's a good chunk. It's over 200 yeah. pages. Uh, it's what? It's so like 90-ish. 90 to 100-ish. Is there a, is there a good break? 
I'm looking right now, but I don't see I don't see a perfect one. Uh, there's one on 108, 108. Because otherwise, I'm looking at beating the odds, and that goes until beating the odds starts on 91. It goes until yeah, I'd say beating the odds. Yeah, is another one. 91 or 108. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing 104. Oh, wait, no mind. That's still betting the odds. It's beating the odds, isn't it? I feel like 108 would be like the the most natural one. Yeah, because I mean, it's that's a, a little bit more. Runner. That's about 50 pages. Yeah, it is. Do we want to go so we can go heavy or this? It looks like we're gonna have to make a choice for this or next week. So, what are we feeling? Fine with either. Let's wait, wait. What was not the other break was 98? You said no, 91. 91. Well, honestly, how about this? I'm actually supposed Ooh, to have some friends one. flying to town this weekend, possibly. Smart move. Can we <laughs> wait? Uh, how do you not know? Smart yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about this. Smart honestly, move. I don't want to mess this up on the podcast. This is funny, Jared. If you see this, this will be real. Uh, yeah, let's just go to page 90. If you guys, there are you go. <laughs> okay, yeah. no, I'm looking okay. around. All right, right. page 90. Cool. We'll go there. Um, all right, let's switch over to our short segments, short snippet sections. Well, I don't even know what I'm calling this. Our short segments. I short, yeah, I mean, that was, like evident, that was evidence of based off your description of it. All right. Uh, our short segments for the day, we got fun facts, we got quote of the day, and we got, what? what's yours now? What thought are you doing today? This thought can provoking. be thought provoking. Yeah, yeah this is good, provoker. though. This is good. I'm excited for this. Oh, okay. Fun fact of the Let's day. Go. Let's go. Chocolate discharge. Choc- Fun fact of the day. Yeah. Chocolate discharges the same chemical into your body that pr- produces when you start falling in love. Wow. Well, that makes sense now. Hmm, Get her a box of chocolates. Oh. That makes sense. Yeah. That definitely makes sense. There I you like go. it. That's good. I have another fun fact. Are we, so I was at the movies last night. They're making a documentary about the GameStop stock. With oh, Pete yeah. Davidson what? In it, and it's going to be. With Pete Davidson in it's it? It's going to be freaking electric, bro. Do you remember that? We oh, were, yeah. We were, was... we were. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wall Street bets, man. We were, what, days away from being millionaires because some people did it. They So the, it's going to be crazy to watch, like, some of the breakdown of it the co- go watch a trailer for it yeah it's, and they did yeah, it for I amc too. Too. Yo, yeah, i think yeah. it has matt yeah. damon it's i saw pete davidson but uh well yeah there was, it, you, you just kind of there's some exposed like yeah there's some black market stuff going on after yeah. that because they robin hood got forced to yeah. shut yeah. shut down this they had trading. to shut down the whole thing yeah yeah, yeah and that's what that. we used and yeah. they, they wouldn't allow us to buy yeah it was crazy yeah that's what we were trying to buy GameStop on but sorry for hijacking that but that's a good fun fact <laughs> bro that's so crazy um, okay, so quote of the day. Unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. There you go. I like that. Shout out to you guys. Just hey, man. Plug that in there. Teamwork makes the dream work, baby. Yes, sir. All right. This one I'm super excited for. So I didn't actually write it down. <laughs> but... Bro, I literally did not write it down, and I'm drawing a blank on my question. Oh okay. no! Give me, give yeah, me a on, second. On, we'll Where did? What did wow. Oh God, I got it! I got it, go. dude. This is a great question. Thank you, Lord. That was so bad. I actually forgot it entirely. It's all back to me. Okay, this is gonna be a fun fact, or fun fact. This is gonna be a great question for you guys, but it's gonna be slightly different for each of you. Since we're doing, since we're opening up our book about sports betting, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you a risky question to see what you guys, what you guys would do if you had the chance. So for Miguel, you have a chance at a at a basketball challenge, right? You can shoot a layup. You get fifty thousand dollars. You've you've been asked this question, but I just want to know. You, you've probably been asked it. Free throw for a hundred thousand. Three pointer for five hundred thousand, or corner for seven fifty. Oh, we. So you have to choose one of them. You, if you make your layup, safest one, 50K, bang. Free throw, feel good about it, 100K. Top key, three, uh, 500K. Go to the corner, 750. You only get I one think... shot, one shot all or nothing. <laughs> hey, you quit. All right, I hey, think... podcast almost over. What you got? <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the free throw. Go with the free throw. You yeah. just take that 100K. I think I'm gonna just go with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get okay. the 100K and flip it. Okay. So for you. Fastball, yeah, five hundred thousand. You just gotta throw it. Fat fastball. For sorry, a strike? sorry, 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 sorry. Fastball for a strike. Okay. Fifty thousand, not five hundred. 
Fastball for a strike, 50,000. Any other pitch, a million. Oh, any, any other, other pitch. Any other. You just you think you'll locate it? Yeah. You trust you trust it? <laughs> for sure. Bro, that curveball is spiking straight <laughs> to the door. You're bouncing that thing. You can be fun. too nervous. You're gonna grip that, dude. You trust your grip. Yeah. On, for a million. For a million. Yeah. I like it, man. Yeah, it with that. Like I love it. the confidence. Hey, if right. he likes it, I love it. But, That's a great answer. All right. Love it. That's gonna have to wrap up this episode. The dogs are barking. It is time to go.